Today we are protecting and securely connecting to our infrastructure, Kubernetes, and basically any other kind of private resource that we want to keep safe. And we will do so without VPNs or legacy system access management systems. And for free, thanks to Teleport. Hey, welcome back to Cutter Dave, where we try and do DevOps just better. Uh, before everything else, apologies if you can hear some noises today. I'm in my temporary apartment here in Hanoi, Vietnam, and there's a lot of traffic outside. Finding a tool that allows you to securely connect to your infrastructure without uh, slowing you down is already a challenge in and of itself. But finding a tool that uh, allows you to do so for basically any kind of private resources you need, whether it's a piece of infrastructure, Kubernetes, or even applications and databases, it's almost impossible. And I said almost because luckily today we have Teleport. Quick disclosure here, Teleport is sponsoring this video. However, they don't have a saying on what I'm allowed and not allowed to say in this video. And they don't see it beforehand. Remember that as always, if I decide to review a service or a product is because I really like it and I think it can be valuable for you. And Teleport ticks all the boxes for me. Also because not only is a great service, but it's free and open source. All right, in this video, I'm gonna show you a lot of different use cases for Teleport and what you can do and how easy it is to use. And I will not focus much on the installation process because I think the documentation does an excellent job in explaining all of that. But let me know in the comment section below if you want me to take on other use cases or if you want me to make a video explaining how to install this service for the different scenarios. I want to point out, however, that the installation can be done in Linux, Windows, and Mac OS, and it supports also a containerized deployment. With that out of the way, let's see what we can do with Teleport. We can use it to access our private Linux servers via secure SSH connection that even supports two-factor authentication, or our Windows hosts with passwordless login experience, which can also leverage role-based access control, our bug. And likewise, use it for connecting to our Kubernetes clusters using, for example, single sign-on. We can use Teleport also to provide secure access to internal dashboards and applications, things like Grafana, a wiki, or internal control panels. Or yet, leverage this service to provide secure access to PostgreSQL, MySQL, MariaDB, and MongoDB databases, as well as SQL Server, while improving both access control and visibility. And we will see examples of all of this in just a moment. With the free open source version, you can do basically everything we've seen. The only drawback is that you need to install and maintain the Teleport components by yourself. If you instead decide to subscribe to their paid version, you can use the cloud version of Teleport and connect all your resources to the centralized access plane and you can also leverage things like OIDC and SAML support while having compliance tools, commercial support, and much more. All right, enough talking, let's see this in action. After installing Teleport, it provides a web interface that in my case, I decided to assign to teleport.coderdave.io using a DNS. After that, you'll be prompted to log in using your username and password. And as you can see, we also have required two-factor authentication. In my case, I have the authenticator up on my phone and you can use any like the Google authenticator, Microsoft authenticator, and so on and so forth. And you just have to insert the code and log in. And just like that, you get access to the Teleport dashboard. You can see on the left, everything we can do, servers, application, Kubernetes, databases, desktop, and some settings. You can manage multiple clusters. This is how Teleport calls their servers. And you can even trust different clusters altogether so you can access different resources of all the clusters in the trust. You can also manage your users. You can create users. You can create roles for all those users. So you can assign different kind of privileges and access control to your users. And you can even add third-party authentication providers or SSO experience. This supports Okta, Active Directory, and GitHub. But if you're using the free open source version, you can only do GitHub SSO. One good thing that, it, as you can see here, is everything is defined in a config as code way. So you can take the YAML, change the YAML, resave it, and save it somewhere to version control, for example, or stuff like that. Last but not least, and we will see this later in detail, you can also have the activity list with sessions. In this case, I only have one active session and some audit log of everything that is going on in your cluster and in your Teleport instance. Now that we have seen the basics of the service and its dashboard, let's try and connect to some Linux server. We are back in our Teleport dashboard in the server section. This is where you have your Linux servers listed. And you can see that I have two servers here. I have the Teleport server itself, 
where I'm running Teleport, and I have this private Linux instance. I don't currently have any public IP address on this private Linux server, as you can see here in the Azure interface. So if it was not for Teleport, I wouldn't be able to connect to this service. What I can do here is click on this connect button. And as you can see, I can select the user I want to connect through. In this case, I have root, Davida and Ubuntu, because are the three users I've associated to this correlative user that I'm using to connect to Teleport. And you can change this based on your preferences, on your usage, and you can assign different users to different Teleport users. Let's say I want to connect using the Davida user. I just click on it and voila, I'm inside the private Linux servers via SSH. I didn't have to specify the password for Davide anywhere. This works directly out of the box through teleport SSO and authentication. Now that I'm on the server, I can do whatever I want here. I can explore the server and I can do everything that is associated on the local user Davide on this server. For example, I shouldn't be able to update the APT, as you can see, because I don't have enough privileges. So whatever privilege has been assigned to the user Davide on this machine is what I'm using here right now. All of this comes with this beautiful web UI that basically takes my SSH connection in a web format. And all I've done to be able to get to this point, let me close the session, was to go to the interface, click on add server, and in here, if I use AWS, I can just follow and generate the script for AWS. Or in my case, since the Linux server is on Azure, I just went to this automatic tab, copied this script, which is a token that will be valid for four hours, and execute that on my Linux server to be able to connect to Teleport. That's it, nothing else. And since you're here, one more thing I want to show you that we've slightly touched on before is this activity session recordings. If I now click, you can see that Today, I had this session, which is created like just a minute ago. What is really, really cool is that I can click on play and see exactly what the user did on the server in this recording of the session. As you can see, this is all I've done on my session on the private Linux server. So everything is recorded and can be played afterwards. And if you don't want to use the web interface, even though in my opinion, it's pretty cool, we also have a CLI tool for connecting. Teleport provides the TSH command line, which helps you log in into Teleport clusters and obtain short-lived credentials for your services. First thing to do is to log in. You can use the TSH login, specifying the server you want to connect to, like in this case, teleport.coderdave.io, the type of authentication, in my case, is local, and the user I want to use, CoderDave. When I do so, I'm prompted for the password, which is the same password I've used during the UI authentication. And also in this case, the two-factor authentication with my security provider, which as I mentioned before, is an OTP token on the mobile authenticator. Now that I'm connected to my server, I can use the TSH LS to list all my Linux server I have. And now I can connect via TSH through my Teleport proxy to my private Linux server. I just do TSH SSH user at server name. So TSH, SSH, David at private Linux. When I do that, Teleport instantiate a secure connection with my server. And here I am, no need for a password because I have the short-lived credential already through the TSH login. And I'm on board my private Linux server. And once again, I can do whatever the user I'm logging in with has permission to do. When I'm done, I can just exit and do LSH logout to make sure that my credentials are cleaned. Impressive, right? I've literally fell in love with this service as soon as I've started using it. Let's try now to connect to our Windows server. In this case, the installation process was a little bit more complex uh, because you need to fiddle with some settings on the domain controller and change some parameters on both domain, group policies, and your host uh, that you're trying to connect to. However, again, in this case, the documentation does an excellent job of guiding you in the step-by-step -step procedure for everything you need to do. Back in the dashboard, this time, let's go to desktops, which is where we have our Windows hosts. You can see I have one Windows server here. And even though this server has a public address, this doesn't have a public RDP port open. Once again, what I can do here is click on connect. You can see that I have different users for Windows than I used to have for Linux before. And again, let's try to log in with Davide. Once again, we have this beautiful web UI opening. Again, I didn't have to input any user or password. Teleport does that for me. 
On the right hand side, you can see that also this session has been recorded. And now that I'm on board, I can do whatever this user has permission to do on this Windows server. In my case, this is an administrative user, so I can do anything I want to, to this server. Again, when I'm done, I can just close the session. And if I go to activity session recording, I have my session recorded, which I can play back and see exactly what each user did on any of these servers. This is pretty cool, I think. And it's a security feature that allows you to do full auditing on your resources to make sure that no malicious activity has been performed. In this example, I've used a server, but of course you can connect to basically any Windows host. The only requirement here is that the system you connect to must be part of an Active Directory domain and the domain controller should be configured for LWS. Let's remain in the infrastructure side of things and let's try to connect to our Kubernetes clusters. Back on the dashboard, let's go on the Kubernetes section. I have here two Kubernetes clusters. And once again, all I've done to add those is click on Add Kubernetes. I just have to add the Helm repo to my machine, select a namespace and the name of the cluster. And when I click Generate a Script, Teleport will generate for me the whole script I need to install the Teleport agent on board my cluster. Once again, with a token that is short-lived to make sure that no mistakes or no malevolent actions are taken. If I want to connect to any of these clusters, I have the full instructions here. So let's see this in action. Before we start, I want to show you that if I run kubectl config view, I currently do not have any configuration for Kubernetes on this machine. Now, what I can do, as we've seen before, is logging in into Teleport using the same TSH login command we've seen before. Once we are in, we can do TSH cube ls to list our Kubernetes cluster that are connected to Teleport. And finally, do TSH cube login with the name of the cluster we want to connect to. In this case, I want to connect to my Civil Kubernetes cluster. Now we are logged in and we've selected the CodeDev-K8S-Civil cluster. Remember that I didn't have any kubectl configuration before, but now if I do kubectl get pods, for example, we can see that we are accessing our Kubernetes cluster without any problem. And if I run kubectl config view once again, we can see that we are not going directly to our cluster, but in fact, we are using Teleport as a proxy, as a pass through to reach our cluster because our cluster doesn't have a public endpoint. This is super helpful. Think about it. Being able to connect to your servers, Kubernetes and other pieces of infrastructure basically from everywhere in the world is priceless. And so it is if you want to connect to application and databases, as you will see in a second. But before we move to these examples, hit the like button below if you're enjoying this video or you find it insightful. This not only will help more people discovering this video and benefit from it, but will also mean a lot to me. Thank you. All right, let's see now what we can do for databases, shall we? As usual, we need to log into Teleport using the TSH login command. And when it's done, Teleport provides the list of databases we have access to with the TSH DBLS. We can use the DB login command to log in on our database, in this case, PostgreSQL, and Teleport configure automatically our command line to be able to use our server. And in here, I can do all I normally would do on my database, whether it's production or not. And I can use the same also for UI tools to connect to my databases. And the good thing is that not only this works through Teleport itself, but if I go to Teleport, I can see that everything is recorded in my activity. And in fact, in the other log, not only I have the session for the database, but I also have the individual commands that I've executed against my database. Last but not least, let's use Teleport to enable access and to control access to our applications. Let's say, for example, you have an internal dashboard that you want to reach, but you don't want to expose that through internet. What you can do is register that as an application inside Teleport and use Teleport as access control. I have two applications here, and the first one is an internal dashboard I have. What I can do is click on Launch, and as you can see, I can access my internal dashboard without providing a password because, once again, Teleport is doing that for me, is acting as auth provider. And also, as you can see, I don't have the actual address exposed, but the application is exposed using a subdomain of my Teleport server domain. So in my case, adweb.teleport.coderdave.io which is not the actual URL of this application. 
What is even cooler is that if I use a non-authenticated session in a browser and I try to visit the exact same link, you can see that the application has not been shown, but instead I have again the teleport authentication page before I can actually access my application. And this can be used also for API access or any other kind of access you want to provide and regulate to applications or any endpoint that supports it. I think you now understand why I've decided to make a video about Teleport. I really think it's a great service that allows you to do a lot of things and is very, very useful. And what we've seen are just few scenarios, but I think you can uh, see the full potential of the service. If I have to nitpick and find something I don't like that much, I think I will love for the uh, Windows installation process and the Kubernetes installation process to be a little bit simpler. And those are the only two that gave me a little bit of trouble to be able to control my servers and especially for the Kubernetes side. So I would love to see that a little bit improved if possible. And also, as we have seen in the interfaces, uh, AWS and GCP services, or some services at least, are supported natively out of the box. Uh, but for me, being a heavy uh, Azure user, I would really love to see Azure supported natively out of the box. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about Teleport. If you want to know more how it works behind the scenes, or if you want to see more videos about different scenarios in which you can use Teleport. Or yet, let me know if you want to see a video on how to install Teleport in the different platforms. Uh, also, check out this video over here in which I cover pros and cons of the emerging civil Kubernetes cloud. But that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I see you in the next video here at Coder Day. Oh.